John Danell, Regional Rotary Foundation Coordinator for Great Britain and Ireland. And shortly, Cheryl Berry, Leader of Humanitarian Service Activities across Great Britain and Ireland, will join us on screen. Welcome to this, our first, the first in our monthly In Focus series. The series of talks, each followed by a time for questions and answers, will cover topics to engage Rotarians and clubs in humanitarian service to our communities and supported by our own charity, the Rotary Foundation. These joint Rotary Foundation and service team talks will be on the second Thursday every month at this time, five o'clock. This evening, our topic is how can Rotarians support the regeneration of our communities across Great Britain and Ireland as we all come out of the coronavirus pandemic. Our speaker, Matthew Kane, joined Rotary in 1996 in Raleigh, North Carolina. He soon realised the deprivation in parts of his town, but also that his own club did not realistically have the resources to make a material change themselves. But by working with others in the wider community, he believed they really could achieve lasting benefit for those less advantaged parts of town. I will say no more, but ask Matthew to tell us about how he suggests working with entrepreneurs, assisting small mm. business owners in developing sound business plans mm. and providing mentoring for others. After Matthew's talk, we'll have an opportunity for, Q mm. for Q questions and answers. So please post any questions using the Q&A button in the menu on your screen. Over to Matthew. Thank you, John. Thank you very much for that uh, introduction. It is uh, an honor to be your inaugural speaker for this really interesting series. And I applaud you Rotarians for just how much you step out and support your communities on a regular basis. I'm happy to report this is my 25th year as a Rotarian. And like many of you all, I look at Rotary as an amazing way to do good in the world. I'm gonna start off my presentation today with, with a little story. Her name is Kathleen and Kathleen is a small business owner. She owns a cleaning business. She has a couple other employees who work for her. She's been in business three years. She's overall pretty content with her business, but she's found over time, she's pretty exhausted. She's overwhelmed. She's not quite sure how much money she makes. And she realizes she went into business without any real training in how to be a business person. Then she heard about a program called Launch Raleigh, part of the Launch My City series. And she learned after an interview that Launch Raleigh offered a lot of things that could really help her business, including business education, mentors, um, networking, and access to capital. One of the things she also learned is that the Launch Raleigh program gave her a supportive community of fellow entrepreneurs. So she didn't feel alone anymore. She felt like there are 19 other people in this program and I can ask them questions and we can talk about our children. We can talk about challenges in our life and I can be part of a wider business community. Kathleen also took access for the mentor program, part of the Launch Raleigh program. Turns out this mentor was a Rotarian. Well, she learned a lot about Rotary, but she also learned here was somebody who had some business experience, never claimed to have all the answers, but became Kathleen's biggest cheerleader for about a six month commitment meeting once a month. Kathleen benefited so much from this Launch Raleigh program, she ended up being a volunteer and a leader in the Launch Raleigh program today. And what's more, you'll be glad to know, she has a new title also, Rotary. Kathleen joined a Rotary Club because she saw what many other people have, and that is a dedication to helping other people in the community. I'd like to get moving now with the, uh, my slides and help explain to you a little bit more about what Launch Rally is and how it happened. 
In 2016, my Rotary Club was ready to kind of make plans to celebrate our 50th anniversary as a Rotary Club. One of the things we wanted to do was to kind of create a program that made a lasting impact in our community. So we ended up doing a needs assessment in a part of our community in Southeast Raleigh, which was largely a minority based community with lots of minority businesses. Well, after the needs assessment, I realized how to do any kind of a business program or how to create something like this. But I've been a Rotarian long enough to know that somebody out there in the Rotary world has probably tackled this challenge. And I wonder how I can access them. So I contacted a group that many of you all may have heard of. It's the Rotary Action Group for Community Economic Development. They put me in touch with some amazing Rotarians in Detroit, specifically Larry Wright and Marilyn Fitzgerald. They had put together a program called Launch Detroit a few years earlier, and they were running a successful program that offered four basic components, business training, small loans, mentors, and networking. Next slide, please. Well, I thought that certainly sounds overwhelming. <laughs> I wonder how we could even begin to tackle that with my Rotary Club, because we don't have the resources. I don't think we have enough people could help to ever pull that off. I wonder what we might do. So we ended up exploring and realizing we don't have to do it all ourselves. One of the things Rotarians are good at, and I bet a lot of the people on this call are good at, is being a catalyst. Someone who is able to not only identify what the challenge is, but to figure out who in their network of people can help solve those challenges. I, have, I often feel like that's almost a requirement of being a Rotarian someday. But what we determined is to put together a successful launch program. What we need are six partners, education partner, a community development partner, a Rotary Club partner, a finance partner, a mentor partner, and a city partner. Next. Well, I'm pleased to say that we did our job. We went out there and found organizations in the community that really loved the idea of supporting small businesses. They included our city, some of the local um, uh, community colleges, in, in sp specifically Wake Tech Community College, which is the equivalent to a, a college uh, in the UK. Uh, a couple of the universities, Shaw University, St. Augustine University, uh, an organization that trains mentors called SCORE, uh, a local banking uh, group, Wells Fargo, uh, and Small Business Carolina Small Business Development Fund, and then the assortment of other folks who came in and basically uh, loved to being part of the expanded program. Next, please. Often people will ask me, you know, Matthew, I hear about this Launch Raleigh program. What kind of businesses are involved anyway? Well, I think you'll see here if you, a bunch of smiling faces. And if you look at the second line, you'll see the different businesses that are in this particular cohort. As you scroll along, what you realize is this is a really diverse group of men and women, as well as business ideas. Some of these different businesses, these business owners run full time and it's their sole source of income. Others, their business is a side gig and they have another full-time job uh, at the same time. And they may also ba be balancing the role as parent of young children. Uh, and then finally, some of these folks own a business. And during the interview process, were able to convince us that their business, although it hasn't started yet, had great promise. So we welcome them into the program as well. So, so far, Wantrali has graduated 108 
graduates over the course of its program. And we have another group of 20 that just started last week for our fall 2021 program. Next slide. So you all might be saying, well, that's all well and good, but where do you even begin to find all these entrepreneurs? They're not knocking on my door. Well, what we found is that we needed to go out in the community. Once we had put together a program and we said, you know, we want to support entrepreneurs in our community, specifically in a, in a local minority community in Southeast Raleigh. Raleigh, by the way, is about five hours drive south of Washington, D.C. So what we did after putting together the nuts and bolts of the program is we went looking for participants. We spoke at chambers of commerce. We spoke at churches. We, looked, we spoke at community centers. We offered information sessions where I or one of the other volunteers would step up and give a little presentation. Hi, we're with Launch Raleigh. We offer business education, uh, mentors, networking, uh, and access to capital, and then allow them to ask questions about the program. Next slide, please. I think this information is helpful for you all to see because oftentimes it's the biggest um, component of the launch program, and that is education. And so what we offer are 10 weeks of business classes, and they meet face-to-face -face during non-COVID times, although last session and the current session are meeting over Zoom. We meet uh, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., so it's a pretty significant commitment, and we meet at the local college who provide that space at no charge. Again, all the partners we get into the program to join with us, and the idea is they offer their services at no charge because we are a community effort, not just Rotary trying to run the show by ourselves. So I often tell people, the more partners you have, the lower the whole program costs. We also recognized early on that there is a social component to all this. So we offer a meal that starts 30 minutes before the program. Part of the idea is to attract the uh, entrepreneurs to arrive early. The other is to get them to talk and get to know each other. And that works so well because we learned that their own friendships end up being one of the benefits of being part of this Launch Rally program when they have other business owners they feel they can confide in, trust, and maybe even buy their product. It's also a difficult program. We tell people that if you're here just to kind of socialize and take advantage of, of uh, maybe having a mentor, um, don't bother applying because in between each of these 10 classes, you're gonna have five to seven hours of homework that's required before your next class. And this homework isn't busy work. What really happens is you are building your business plan through your homework. Next slide, please. The curriculum that we use is from an organization called Kaufman. And you can find more information about that at launchmycity.org. And this gives you some general idea on some of the components of the education. And we don't wanna to get too much into the weeds here, but really what we're trying to do is help people better understand their business, better understand their financials, better understand how to find new customers, how to network in their community, and basically how to grow their business. For you all in the UK, you may very well find that there's another program or a different curriculum that you'd rather use. Uh, and I would encourage you to kind of look into that as well. Next slide. One of the things I wanna make sure that you know is that this class that operates is interactive adult learning. We don't have somebody at the front of the room speaking from behind a podium, droning on and on, not at all. Instead, what it is is an active dynamic program where the facilitator is in charge of the program and he is often, or she, getting people up, moving around, answering questions, 
challenging them about things they've said, making them defend what they said about their income or about their future plans or their projection. People laugh and tease each other and they realize I'm part of a really significant business community that cares about me. It's also important I wanted to say is that the person who leads our program is called a facilitator. And that's different than an instructor. Right? The instructor says, I have all the answers. The facilitator says, I'm going to draw this information out of each of you all. You all are smart business owners, and each of you have something important to share with one another. Next slide, please. At the end of the 10 weeks program, we have a graduation. And each of the graduates gets to give a five minute infomercial on a stage. Often they put together a PowerPoint presentation, and it's a beautiful thing to realize where they came from when they first applied to Launch Rally until when they're finishing up the education component, they're on stage proudly talking about their product, super confident and realizing I've got something to offer and you ought to be buying it. Next slide. After they finish the education component, we connect them with a mentor. And the mentor, sometimes people get confused about that and they say, oh, I could never be a mentor because I don't have all the answers people are certainly gonna ask. Well, the interesting thing is, usually the questions the mentors are asking have more to do with basic business concepts than crazy challenging um, uh, technological or mathematical questions. So usually what happens is the mentor needs to be somebody who is a really good listener, somebody who can um, hear about somebody's future ideas for their business, offer some concrete sounding board listening and suggestions, and be a cheerleader. And that's what we found is the most successful uh, mentors are often Rotarians, but they don't have to be. They can be other people who have some basic business experience out in the community who say, you know, I bet I could help somebody with their business. And the ask that we usually ask is meet once a month, typically face to face, maybe for an hour or an hour and a half. Again, build a relationship. And once you have that relationship, then the mentees are much more likely to trust and open up to share about the challenges in their business because they're like all the rest of us, right? We, they want, at first, they want everyone to look at their business and say, oh, you're so, so successful, you probably don't have any questions, but that's not the case. All business owners have challenges, they have little demons, they have concerns, and the mentors, once they realize the mentees understand they can trust their mentor, then a friendship grows and that business grows as well. Next slide, please. One of the things uh, our entrepreneurs grow to learn, and that is networking is a really important component of their business. And many of you all who are Rotarians recognize Networking is so important to pretty much any project you lead or things you do in the community. Same thing with being an entrepreneur or a small business owner. I'm happy to say that our local chamber of commerce and lots of the other local chambers of commerce look at these small business that we start through the Launch Rally program or we help support through the Launch Rally program, particularly those that are minority owned. And they see that group and they say, you know, you all are exactly the kind of people we want as members of our Chamber of Commerce, but often we can't find them and we don't know where, how to recruit them. So we've de they've developed a relationship with us to the point that our Chamber of Commerce, the Raleigh Chamber of Commerce, offers a free one-year membership to all of our graduates. And the idea is for one year, check us out, be available, participate in the community, be part of different events, show your face. You'll definitely grow your business and find new clients. And at the end of that, we want you to join our chamber and be an, and be an active paying dues member. Next slide. Another component, next slide please. 
the next the next component is microloans, and sometimes what we find at the very beginning is entrepreneurs will approach us and say something like, "Show me the money, show me the money." I remember one of the entrepreneurs said that to me, and I said, "Well, let's just see." And what kind of happens over the course of the program is they realize there are a lot of facets of their business that they can improve and they can grow that don't necessarily cost a whole lot of money. But we do point them towards resources and finances uh, in the community that can really help them be successful. Um, what I have learned is that through the UK, throughout the UK, there are groups called partner agencies, which you can access locally in your community that can help you find out the best way to support financially your small businesses. Next slide, please. So again, here's another sample of one of our groups. And again, I wanna just turn your eyes towards the different wide variety of businesses that you see here anywhere from food trucks to digital marketing to bartending service, uh, community murals, hair extensions. You know, the, the, the idea, the whole business community steps forward and we try to help everybody who is really clearly focused on building their business. But what we have found over time is our reputation has gotten strong enough that we have a lot of people applying, which ends up being pretty good for us because the last program, we had 115 applications. We offered to interview 60 of the entrepreneurs. We actually interviewed about 40 and selected 20. And that group started with an orientation just one week ago. And I'm really excited that this group will be successful, even more successful business owners. Next slide. One of the things that has worked well in our community is the Launch Raleigh program uh, through my Rotary Club, the North Raleigh Rotary Club, connected with other Rotary Clubs. And they would start talking and they'd say, I've heard about that Launch Raleigh program. How'd you guys do that anyway? <laughs> and can you give us some tips and some suggestions? And so what has happened over the last four or five years is other Rotary Clubs, with the help of our local college, have put together launch programs of their own. And I'm pleased to say that there are now a total of about 480 launch graduates just in our county. And our um, um, community college is a huge reason for why this has worked so well in our community. Next slide, please. Some of you all might be saying, well, that's all well and good, but I wouldn't even know where to find my Rotary Club. We wouldn't even know where to begin. There are lots of resources. There's so much stuff to do. Matthew, how do you even begin to do something like that? Well, recognizing that other Rotary Clubs may, may want to steal our idea that we stole from Launch Detroit and the brilliant people there, Marilyn Fitzgerald and Larry Wright, um, all those folks who make things happen in Detroit, um, that we put together a website called Launch My City. You can find it at launchmycity.org. And it is a template that allows you to access all kinds of information through our resource kit and blueprint. And all that information is, is available for free. We're also honored um, uh, on the website, what you'll see is a link that allows you to access all the different launch programs that have websites, which are the vast majority of them, because we also make the template for the website available at no charge to encourage you all to build websites as you move your program forward. Next slide, please. So in a nutshell, for those folks in the community who say, you know, I'd really love to be able to impact my community. I recognize that COVID has had an impact in our community. A lot of businesses are struggling. Might Rotary possibly be the answer for that? 
And to that, I would say, maybe. So what I encourage you to do is start off with a needs assessment. Determine for yourself, what are the needs in my community and how do I go about solving them? Because if you don't do a needs assessment and you just jump right in and say, we're going to do this program, you may find it a year down the road that you're replicating a program that doesn't need to be replicated. But what we've found, and that's in small cities and large cities, is that Rotary is often the key to be a catalyst to make good things happen in small businesses. And I'm really proud to be a Rotarian and recognize that Rotary can play a huge impact, whether your small business is in Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, London, or maybe a small uh, city in Ireland. Um, next slide, please. And if there's uh, anything that I can do, whether it be today or down the road, to help support this idea that there may be interest in launch programs in Great Britain and Ireland, uh, I and many of the people at the um, uh, Rotary Action Group for Community and Economic Development would love to be part of and help make that happen. Uh, that is absolutely something I would encourage you to do. Go to, or go to this website and, and explore and consider becoming a member. And that's uh, www.ragced.org, RAG, Rotary Action Group for Community and Economic Development. So that concludes my presentation. I'd uh, welcome Cheryl to um, come on the screen and take over. Hi Matthew, thank you so much. That was absolutely wonderful. You've mm. fired us up with enthusiasm for so many wonderful ideas with social entrepreneurs and business entrepreneurs. We have some questions that were sent in beforehand. Um, the first question is from James Bolton. James asks, how did you engage with people in Detroit? Well, um, I'm proud to say that they were so welcoming and helpful, as many of you all have found other Rotarians to be. The first thing they said was, wow, um, you really like our program. We are honored. So how can we help? So essentially, I got them on the phone and I, I, I spent four hours with poor Larry Wright on the phone over a couple <laughs> different calls. He answered the questions as best he could while he managed phone in one hand, operating his business yeah. with the other. And then he connected me with a woman named Marilyn Fitzgerald. And I asked her four hours worth of questions. And so what, what I found is that Rotarians are incredibly generous with their time. Uh, they want to be able to help you do a project uh, successfully. Yeah. And they were, they were awesome partners in the program. And they continue to be. I can send you to uh, consult them on occasion. And we've now gotten big enough to the point where sometimes they ask us questions too, which is the biggest honor. Brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. And in the same way as you've showed this evening, that your launch rally is, is now spread out and you're helping others. So it's absolutely a network of Rotarians supporting and helping Rotarians. Um, following on from that, Alan Morgan is asking, how does a Rotary group become the conduit between need and provision in our community? I think that's a, that's a really good question. And I think, this, I think the, real, the real answer lies in the needs assessment, right? We can go out there and we can say, my community needs a focus on literacy or my community needs a, a hunger relief program. But really what we need to do is ask questions. And I like to think that Rotarians are good at asking questions. So if you ask the questions and you really, really listen, you can learn in your community. You know, we would go out in the community and we'd ask um, one of the partners on that list is a community economic development partner, a community economic partner. And, and what we say on that, we ask them and we say, we don't have any idea. Tell us about the business needs of, of entrepreneurs in Southeast Raleigh. And from there, they were able to tell us, well, um, a lot of them feel honestly like they're operating on an island. 
They don't really have any access to other, other to supportive help. What people sometimes feel is there are a lot of resources if you're a large tech company yep. or if you're yep. a new company moving to town offering a thousand jobs. There's no shortage of attention from government organizations and local companies. But yep. when you are somebody trying to start or keep opening a hair salon yep. or a catering business or a shoe store, yep. you don't have people lined up to say, oh, 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 we want to help you. We want to help you. Yeah, which was so lovely, the examples yeah. that you gave us to see people positively blossoming. Now, mm. this, the next question actually leads on rather well to that idea about the sort of scale of things, because Janine Bertwistle is asking, is there a minimum or maximum size of community this Launch My City initiative would work with and what size is best? Yeah, uh, I've been asked that question before, and, and I think that my short answer is the launch program works regardless if you are in a tiny town or a big town. And this really came through to me when I heard a story from Mark Murray, who is the founder of Launch Lenaway in Michigan. And I'm talking to Mark, and he and I had talked to you know, for months before then. He initially learned about it from the leaders of the Launch Detroit program, which is maybe a few hours away from his city in, in Lenaway, Michigan. And he and I talked, well, anyway, a few months later, he and I are on a call and he said, you know, Matthew, it's turned out that our launch program has really transformed our community. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, so for the Launch Lenaway program, I had to find out who the leaders were for our college, who the leaders were in economic yep. development, who the yep. leaders were for the Chamber of Commerce, who the leaders are for, for you know, all kinds of different areas. Yep. And they didn't know each other. No. And I didn't know them. So we brought them to the table and together we built Launch Lenaway. And I said, Mark, that's so, that's so great. He yep. said, but Matthew, that's not the end of the story. He said, what happened next is the amazing part. And that is when new challenges came up to face our city, the same group that got together to build yeah. Launch Lenaway are now the problems solving, solving issues about hunger relief, That's wonderful. about, about uh, climate change, about uh, yeah. issues with uh, uh, um, issues that affect our community. Yeah. Yeah. And he says, frankly, I never expected that Rotary would end up being the catalyst in the community that it's grown to be. That's marvellous. Yes, thank you mm. so much, because there's, there's that structure there already to respond to whatever, isn't there? There's that trust yeah. and partnership. Excellent. Yeah. Now, the last question sent in, uh, and you have actually touched on this in some of your mm. slides. How can Rotary develop business networks similar to Chambers of Commerce, or community interest companies with BME and with SMEs? Hmm. One of the things we recognized in our own community, remember I told you we have all these different launch programs in our community, and Katie Gales, who is the brainchild behind the education component for our launch program, she is employed uh, with our local college, Wake Technical Community College. And she put together the concept that what we really needed was a countywide launch program yep. that provided services and support to all the different launch programs. Because like I said, we now have 480 graduates. So the way we answer that question is we've gotten big enough now that we yeah. essentially have our own little mini chamber of commerce. Yeah, yeah. Where we support yeah. one another. We offer, we have a, a Facebook group. We have a resources that get together and they get, to, uh, these business owners are invited to networking events. Right. Uh, we, have, we have annual gatherings. Uh, we have education programs. We encourage them to share their uh -huh. business with all the other people in the program. So, so if, if I sell ice cream and, yeah. and, you, and you sell uh, business services, yeah. I, I want to go to you and I want you to come and buy my ice cream. Yeah. 
Sounds, sounds a little bit like how yeah. Rotary was started, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. That's just what I was thinking when you were talking. I think that's our very yeah. beginnings were in this kind of work. So, yeah, mm -hmm. thank you so much. I'm going to hand back to John now because he's been watching the Q&A. Uh, so mm -hmm. we'll see if there's any come in during the evening. John? Yes, thank you, Cheryl, and thank you very much, Matthew. There's some uh, good answers to supplement a, a fascinating, interesting talk. I noted during the talk your one free, uh, one free, sorry, start again, your one free year idea, and, and noted it chimes well with an idea we're developing in a similar way for, for Rotary membership in some districts in, in GB&I. And in mm. fact, then during the, uh, the, the questions that come in, Eve Conway, um, has asked, uh, she's phrased it, you mentioned about the Chamber of Commerce offering a year's membership. Did you think about Rotary doing the same? Associate membership, perhaps, to find out about Rotary. So would you like to comment on that? Sure. I, I think that's a wonderful idea. I know my own Rotary Club has been exploring that, uh, as has, and, and in fact, um, a local Rotary Club offered specifically um, a free membership for leaders in, in the um, uh, minority community that was near their program. So they brought a few of those uh, members in, and, and here we are four years later, uh, some of those same business leaders from the minority community are now really active in their Rotary Club. That's in, that's in Durham, North Carolina. Good, thank um, you. Let me also uh, take it, take a minute if I could and expand on that um, is, uh, I don't know if the, is the concept of co-working spaces common in, in UK? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure what you mean, but yeah. I suspect the concept yeah. happens. Yeah, so essentially in, in, in the US, there is a program, they call it co-working spaces. So it is like an office where nobody has necessarily closed doors but people who don't have other outside offices share space. And because a lot of times people are running businesses just kind of off a laptop and there may be a little place to have uh, lunch off to the side. They might run some, some uh, training sessions off to the side. There are conference rooms that people can use at their own discretion as needed. And these spaces are far less expensive than would be renting your own space on a monthly basis. And the reason I mention all this is because we have uh, uh, two different co-working spaces that have offered our graduates 90 days free membership. Because again, they look at Launch Raleigh and they say, those are the kind of small businesses we want to support. And if we give them 90 days free to try us out, we bet they'll join us at the end. We do have that sort of concept. I can't stop there and think of the phrase we would commonly mm. used, but that, uh, that that idea and combined with an open plan office, which allows them so much yeah. better sharing of ideas really works well. Just to remind all the attendees, if you've got further questions, um, I've got about oh, there's a few more come in just now as well. I've got about a dozen actually. We may or may not get through all the questions, but I'd better push on and ask you um, on the base, on the, on the back of that and quite a number coming in, Matthew, um, Perhaps, if I may rudely suggest, shorter rather than longer answers. But, mm -hmm. um, sorry, my, my video went off there for some reason. Um, so the first one, a uh, question from Ashley Gray. What was the lead What was the lead in time from the initial concept of Launch Rally to the first class taking part in the programme? Uh, for us, it was about uh, 12 months from the time we initially started it until we, uh, fin we, till we started our first class. What we have found though, is because we are able to help clubs and they find resources as templates through the Launch My City program, that plenty of launch programs are starting in six months or less. The biggest challenge is basically putting together your volunteer team, finding the partners and then recruiting. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, I've just had two or three of the questions I've just seen come in and commenting co-working space is much more prevalent post pandemic. Mm. Yes, co-working is very big in the UK, as is also something called the Entrepreneur Programme funded by Bank. Quite sure what the full 
me meaning of that is. Let me go back to the, the full questions I have anyway. Um, are your, you showed us a website template and uh, Janine's asked, are clubs in GB&I able to use the website template or does it need tailoring? Um, every Rotary Club tailors it to exactly what they want. So, so nobody takes our template and uses 100% of it. But I would say if, you know, if a, a, a club in the UK wants to use it, I mean, among other things, you would change the logo, right? Ours, ours says, for instance, launch Raleigh. Um, so you change the logo. You may also, you know, on there, you would change maybe the, the time you meet uh, and some other components. But the idea is it's a WordPress based document so if you have somebody who's familiar with WordPress, we essentially just send you the template and the code to access it, and then you guys take it from there. That's excellent. WordPress is very widely used over here as well. So yeah. that's good to know. Thank you. James Bolton has asked, to what extent has online delivery during COVID-19 made things easier, or for that matter, harder, when it comes to the collaborative and interactive, le interactive learning? Well, what I would say is that once COVID hit, we, like everybody else, was trying to figure out, okay, how do we work? Because we was, it was always face-to-face. -face. And that was one of the most remarkable things about the program is how people built friendships. Well, I'm happy to report that the facilitator that we used, Dr. Larry Woods, is such an animated facilitator and draws energy out of people that even at the end, when we surveyed people and we said, so how was your experience? We know it wasn't as good as face-to-face, -face, but can you give us a sense on how much you like the program? Pretty much without exception, people said, wow, that program was great. Dr. Woods was able to put us in separate breakout rooms. And as a result, we still got to know people pretty well even while I'm sitting at home in my pajamas. So, <laughs> so it turns out that the benefit of people being able to comfortably meet at home, uh, our intention this year, when we thought the COVID thing was going away, was that, um, is that we would do a hybrid version, that they would meet in person sometimes, but not always. That the idea of meeting from your home um, was, gonna, was gonna play an important role. But at the moment, we're, we're back to 100% virtual, which is what how it happened last year. As always with these sorts of things, I guess to some extent depends on the quality of the uh, facilitators that you bring in and their ability to, to, to provide good inspiration. So thank you. Mm -hmm. um, do you have advice about how to carry out the needs assessment in local communities that you mentioned? That's from Nigel Aaron. Yeah, I mean, the, the very first thing to do is find a good document. You know, there's a sample document uh, in our resource kit at launchmycity.org, but it's not the only one. Essentially, uh, we took that from a, a different Rotary district that uses it for all their needs assessment. Um, but essentially what you want to do, I mean, uh, what you want to do is focus on, um, uh, you, you want to be able to at least narrow it down to know that you're, what you're exploring is community and economic development. You're not talking about, you're not, the focus isn't about poverty on feeding people or on housing. You're really trying to focus on small businesses and what you could do or what needs to be done to be able to help them. And if you can tunnel vision like that and ask the questions uh, on the needs assessment with that in mind, then I think that's, that's got to be the best approach. I'm going to put my foundation hat on for a second and also add, if I may, but of course, community needs assessment is an essential part of gaining a Rotary grant or a grant from Rotary Foundation for any of your projects. So anyone who's thinking about that, there's a lot of information on the Rotary Foundation um, pages in the uh, um, yeah. RI website, which will help with that as well. Yeah. John, John if, I could, sorry. if I could add to that, uh, I also wanted to point out that the Rotary Foundation was very helpful for us as we first started Launch Raleigh, because we did in fact apply for and receive a district grant. And we used money from my own club 
and recruited two other clubs to help at least play a, a financial role in building and establishing Launch Raleigh. So to me, it was, it's been very important from the beginning to know that the Rotary Foundation played an important role in starting the launch program uh, and continues, I know, these days in helping launch Detroit and other launch programs across the, the United States. Kath Chorley asks, how do we see ourselves in the, well, she says, how do we see ourselves in the UK? I guess it's how did you see yourselves in, in, uh, in your, your um, cities in relation to provisions offered by central government? How do you avoid, perhaps she's getting out, how do you avoid clashes and so on there? Um, well, I, I can tell you this, that um, what we're offering is a community response to economic development. So the government might be able to throw money at a problem or during COVID was able to provide grant money. Essentially, you fill out a form, you say, you tell the government how you're going to use the money. And then at the end, they, they will, if you use the money the way you said you did, they'd forgive the loan. That's a lot different than we're going to hold your hand during a business training class for 10 weeks. We're going to provide you a mentor. We're going to provide you networking. And so the government, I think, um, can support. And our city has been very helpful. But what Rotary can offer, along with our partners, is a real, uh, is a real effort to build community support. Um, I will say this as, a, uh, as an applause to my own city. The city of Raleigh uh, City Council uh, uh, agreed to give us a grant uh, two months ago for thirty thousand dollars. That is covers for two years uh, because they believe in what we're doing. Um, in that sort of area, one of the questions is: um, Have you actually found many businesses do take you up on micro loans? Um, we have Jimmy Johnson, who were part of a similar program in Glasgow when Detroit was launched, um, and found that local Rotary wasn't keen to give out micro loans, um, although it is something that can, under fairly tight constraints, be uh, supported by the Rotary Foundation. Um, I can t put a different spin on that as well, something we tried to follow through in our own district, is that businesses aren't all necessarily that keen to take up micro loans because some of them are thinking, well, I'm already too much in debt. I don't want to take on more loans and risk being stuck in debt. So have you found many do take up your micro loans? Is that an important part of the, of the activity? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that question, John. And my own experience is our entrepreneurs that are part of our program are not very keen on, on loans even when we give them a very nice name and we give them a very low interest rate. Um, uh, and, and, and I think that's really for a variety of different reasons. But what we have found is that they are very keen on the idea of free money that they don't have to pay back. <laughs> and you know, I can't blame them for that. So among the ways we do that is um, uh, last February, we hosted a business pitch competition so the people from the most recent graduating class uh, had a chance to pitch their businesses online in front of judges. And the judges kept score and ended up, we announced you know, the winners and, uh, and we gave out cash prizes and they didn't have to pay that money back or account for it, but you can bet that money was, uh, uh, was definitely used in support of their business. While we're talking about money, uh, Louise McCants Price has asked, could you give an idea of the budget you need to set up a launch rally for a year? Or whichever city, um, I guess. Yeah, so it's like a lot of things. I would say at the high end, uh, this is all in US dollars, sorry, uh, $8,000. At the low end, maybe $2,000. And and frankly, those numbers could even go higher or lower because it's 100% dependent on the partner network that you put together. So for instance, if you need to pay a facilitator, add $2,500 to that. If you have the community provide the meals instead of you having to go to a caterer and provide the meals, 
take off two thousand dollars, right? So everything you everything is going to cost some money. So the question is, through your partnership, um, how much of that can you get donated? And what we've found is that my own Rotary Club thought we were going to spend a lot of money putting on these programs, but we really do not. And particularly now that we've gotten some funding from the city that has seen and really applauded our program, my Rotary Club, you know, is is really not coming up with very much money. Uh, I'm glad to report. Good. That's uh, encouraging. Thank you. Yeah. Eve Conway's come back with a question um, about follow up. How much follow up do you have with the people who have been on launch, launch rally? after they have finished the program and the mentoring and how successful are they in general? Do they come back to, and, and, oh, and the supplementary, do they come back to train others? Yeah, that's, that's the, to me, that's such an important question. And that is, they do come back. Um, one of the things I'm really proud to say is our Launch Raleigh leadership team is mostly made up of Launch Raleigh graduates who stepped forward to say, you know, this program really helped me. I'd like to help other people. So we have graduates who are interviewing for the next class, uh, but they're on the other side of the interview table now. Uh, we've got some folks who are out there at information sessions talking about the program and, and they're meeting and they're doing planning and coordinating uh, before each class or during each class we have what we call graduate assistants. And two people who've graduated from the program come back to the current program. They talk about their business, how the launch program has helped them. And, um, uh, and then they sit around and they help answer questions later in the meeting that the facilitator asks them to help people better understand their business. Thanks. Just one last question, and then uh, we'll go back over to uh, to Cheryl to, to, to round up. Um, Jim Curry makes the point that there are many networking support organizations, both in the UK and the US, which provide some of these, uh, th these things, these activities. One example he mentions is BNI. I don't know the initials, but he thinks it's a US concept. Um, I, I think the question behind that is, um, do you find yourselves clashing with them or put it the other way around, how do you work effectively with them? Hmm. Um, early on, I was asking that very same question. I thought, you know, these individual ideas are not by themselves unique, right? The idea that you might educate uh, business, put together business training, that in itself is not unique. The idea that you might provide access to money, that's not unique. Well, everybody knows you need to network, right? And so, so how do you, so the idea is that, why is this unique? And the answer I've learned is because we put all the four of them together and we put a community support behind it and, and we're consistent and we actually do it rather than just talking about it. So that's one of the things I think that's great about Rotarians is we say we found a problem in the community and we're here to help. And we found that the launch program, I mean, certainly if, if we were not answering a significant challenge in the community, we would not have all these other launch programs starting to answer the same question in their community. Good answer. Thank you. I'm going to ask one last quick question, which I think I'd get shot by our membership people if someone hadn't posed it. Um, do many of your entrepreneurs, any of your trainees, your whatever you call them, do many of them join Rotary? Beautiful question. Um, I'm really proud to say that in the area of Southeast Raleigh, which is historically black owned businesses and uh, black residents, uh, there has never been a Rotary Club until one year ago. And there's now a Rotary Club in Southeast Raleigh. Um, uh, almost half of the members are either graduates of the Launch Raleigh program, or they are from partner organizations who heard about Rotary through their partnership and said, yeah, I, I want some of that. 
great, great, great stuff. It's good to know that uh, that's happening. Um, I've been asked how, how we communicate with you, and I, I'm sure I can just uh, speak on your behalf. You're quite happy for us to put people in touch with you if you want any further information. So I'll, I'll, with that, I'll pass over to Cheryl, if I thank may. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Matthew, thank you so much. It's been a great start to our In Focus programme. We've been inspired by you, working with our partners. We're going to be uh, regenerating along community and economic lines and also developing the entrepreneurs. So a huge thank you. Just to say to our audience, really pleased you've joined us tonight. We hope you'll come back on Thursday, October the 14th at five o'clock, where our speaker is Caroline Johnson. She's the chair of Bell Rag, the Basic Education and Literacy Rotary Action Group. She's going to talk about literacy changes lives, how Rotarians make it happen. Carolyn is a past district governor of Rotary Drist District 7780, and she's also the founder of the Culture of Reading programme, which is part of the Guatemala Literacy Project. So please come and join us again. And like you did this evening, bring along your partners so we can really then develop Rotary in action from this In Focus series. So thank you to Matthew, thank you to all of you, and please join us again on the 14th of October. Thank you.